Hey guys, Ray from Love you RV. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing an action camera from a company called Acaso. Now, I've read a reviewed a few items of theirs over the years. Uh, this Acaso rear view dash camera. I didn't really like it too much. I found it with too many reflections on it and it was a little dim, so it wasn't one of my favorite things. Ended up doing a giveaway on that one. Um, also, I uh, had a Acaso Trace one pro dash cam and i used it for for a couple of years and it really performed well i've since i've gone to a different brand but i gave that away to some uh, friends of mine um and also three years ago i was uh, and asked me what i wanted for my birthday and i went with this acaso v50 elite so she uh got that for me in 2019 and I've used it for quite a few things over the years to do with the YouTube channel and stuff like that. You can see there's some examples there. Mostly what I liked is it had an underwater case so I could take it and get some really neat underwater footage. It's really what I like to use action cams for. Um, so recently a castle got a hold of me and asked if I'd like to review their new uh, Brave 8 which is kind of an upgrade to that uh, V50 Elite, latest, greatest sort of thing. Uh, you can see here it's got 4K, 60 frames per second, 48 MP images, 8 8K time lapse, super wide angle, 16 times slow mo, so just slow motion right in the camera, AI face metering, dual color screens as a front screen, and better sound quality. But the big thing for me is it uh, has an it has a waterproof case. So the actual case is the other one you had to put in a special kind of waterproof case. You had to put the camera in the case. This one, the actual thing is good for 33 feet or 10 meters. So anyway, uh, in this video, I'm going to go through and kind of give you a look at the camera, some of the accessories you get with it. And then I'm going to take it out and do a, a few uh, tests with it. I'll test the the slow mo on it and time lapse, but I really want to be interested in taking it out and using it for underwater. So there's a, a kind of a neat to see reef close by here. I'm going to take it out there and check that out. And also we have a, a river with some salmon running through it. So I'm going to take that out and we're going to take and have a look at the salmon underwater. That should be pretty cool. So let's get to it. So here's the one I've been using, the V50 Elite model. And uh, the reason I like it is it could go underwater, but the drawback is you have to use this special case to do that. So that's been okay. I've gotten some decent footage from it, but it is kind of a hassle putting it in and out of the case all the time. That's why I was super interested in their Brave series, the Brave 8, because its case is actually waterproof to 10 meters or 33 feet without needing to go in the case. Actually, if you put it in the case, I think it can go much deeper. But anyway, I wanted something that would be very easy to use like that. So it was worth exploring this. Anyway, let's just take it apart and I'll give you a look at it and all the accessories you get. That's one thing about the Acaso brand. You get a, quite a few uh, mounting accessories with them and other things like remote control, stuff like that. Yeah, so here's all the accessories. You get the kinds of straps and things to hold it plus all these different mounting arrangements. I kind of like this one because you can mount it onto a, a tripod. Um, the Swiss one you can mount it onto a bar of some sort. These you can 3M mount things. Also you get a, a wrench for tightening those up. And then you get a remote control which can be quite handy. So it's wireless remote. You can change it from photo to video mode and also record mode so if you want to take videos of yourself or selfies from a distance that's pretty good useful for that and then here's the camera so it does come in a case because you use the case for different mounting arrangements but the camera it's it doesn't need that for waterproof ability just come out of there push that out there we go so that's the little camera and you got a back screen and a front screen and also this little thing is kind of cool because it pops off so it's kind of a little screen protector and you can see the rubber o-ring in there for protecting from water all these are, are rubberized so they protect from water and then the, the hatches do so there's a battery hatch in here and it's got rubber on it for waterproof and then there's another hatch over here 
and it has a, a USB connector and for your uh, your uh, SD micro SD card and it's waterproof so that's kind of cool so this can go right into the water you can dive down with it or take it snorkeling or just put it under the water mainly I like to use it for uh, I like to go and uh, put underwater during fish runs or I like to explore the coast some water underwater footage on the coast and also if I want to do some outdoor photography and it's just pouring rain or wind I don't want to damage any of my other cameras I can just take this along and get some footage so it looks like the Brave 8 is going to be a nice upgrade to my V50 Elite See, it's a little bit bigger, but uh, the case is uh, rubberized, and like I say, it's uh, waterproof, the case itself. This one's more of a plasticky case. They both have touch screens, um, but uh, this one you kind of just have to push buttons. This one has a nice swipe feature, so you can swipe to different settings. You swipe up, you get your video settings or your photo settings. Swipe down, you get... All your different uh, other settings you can get into preferences scroll through those so that's kind of neat it seems to be pretty responsive too works better I found the the other camera was a little flaky as far as that goes and then you swipe this way and you can go between recording video time lapse photos slow motion so it's quite quick and then you swipe this way and then you can play back things on the, the screen itself. Swipe down. It also comes with a app so you can set this to uh, turn on Wi-Fi. Oops. There we go. Wi-Fi. Turn that on. Nope. First I have to connect to Brave 8 and my Wi-Fi. There we go now, connect camera, there we go. So with this it comes in handy if you want to do some uh, remote shooting, like say you want to capture some birds or something coming into a, a fountain or a feeder, you could just wait and then you can hit record here. You can change various functions like motion time lapse and record video, take photo, that sort of thing. They also have, uh, it's a feature to upgrade the firmware we'll go through here. Um, if you uh, if you see a thing saying the firmware needs to be upgraded, it'll go through this app format card. It's pretty basic functions, but comes in handy. Also, I noticed that they have upgraded the battery. This is the battery size I had for the the older model, and this battery is the newer model battery so it's a little bit chunkier a little bit thicker and taller so this one I think is around a thousand milliamp hours and the other one is more like 1400 so a little bit of an improvement it's hard to gauge how long the battery lasts because a lot depends how how long the screen is on and exactly what you're doing with it whether you're recording video but I find if I take it out and I'm using it and I, I make sure to turn it off kind of in between uses don't just look like have it on all the time I'll get probably about an hour out of a battery and it came with two batteries and a little charger and one more feature it has the old one didn't have is a front screen so we just hold that button down for a couple seconds and the front screen comes on that's handy if you're doing selfies and stuff like that you know you can kind of put yourself in the frame hold it switches back to the back so I'm not going to go through all the different resolutions um, I'll link to the manual if you're all interested in that there's also quite a few <clears throat> videos online that they go through and they demo every resolution as they're walking so and there's also a ton of videos online that compare this to the GoPro I think they mostly compare it to the GoPro 10 now with that's about double the price this goes for so of course the GoPro 10 basically is better in almost every category but depends how much money you're willing to spend on an action cam so now we've had a look at all the features and specs of this and what's included in the package 
I'm going to now take it out and we'll do some recordings in uh, different uh, formats. Uh, we'll try some uh, different uh, resolution recordings. I'll check out the slow motion recordings. Um, we'll test out uh, you know, as an action cam how smooth it is. Uh, maybe a time lapse. And definitely I want to go and try some different underwater uh, attempts. Maybe in the river or on the ocean beach just to, to see how it performs underwater. And then I'll kind of compare it to the older version and come back with my uh, pros and cons for this uh, Brave 8 model. Stay tuned. Okay, so here's a walking and talking test of the audio next to the waves with a little bit of wind from behind. So you can kind of see how the Brave 8 microphone works, how it picks up my voice. Seems to be pretty good compared to my older uh, V50 Elite model. It had really bad sound, so they've actually improved it quite a bit in the Brave 8. I'm going to take the camera and head out. There's a reef out there that's exposed at low tide and has some interesting critters in the tide pool. So we'll take advantage of the waterproof case on this Acaso and I'll do some uh, footage, try to get some maybe uh, slow motion shots under there maybe a time lapse of a sea star or something like that so let's go so first since it's an action cam i'm going to give you some uh, image stabilization recordings this is with the image stabilization turned right off kind of a good test for it because i'm kind of walking on a rocky beach so I'm kind of jerking around on the camera now we'll switch to its normal stabilization. Okay, here we go. Stabilization normal. I guess this is a setting you would usually have it on. Now we'll switch to what they call super smooth. Okay, so we're in super smooth stabilization mode now. One disadvantage of this mode is it kind of crops the picture. I think that's how they attain the super smooth stabilization. They use a smaller part of the picture, then they can use the extra pix pixels electronically to smooth out the picture. Another drawback is you can't just copy this straight out of the SD card onto your computer. You first have to download it onto your phone and then it has to go through some processing. So kind of a little bit of an extra step there and the processing can take quite a while if it's a long file. So anyway, that's the super smooth. Okay, so tide's still going out, but we already got lots of uh, of the sea stars here, a ton of purple ones. See them down there. Find myself a good little uh, pool with lots of uh, life in it to dump the camera into. Yep, Bonaparte Gull. Hey, Mr. Bonaparte Gull, how are you doing today? So here's what I do. I have an old uh, beat up walking stick that I don't care about sticking into salt water. I get a couple of the adapters there, set it up like that so I can dip it in the water and explore underwater. So let's go. Okay, looks like a good pool here. It's got a kelp forest in there, so it should be kind of interesting. Try not to fall in.
So next I'm going to do a time lapse. I've got a little bean bag here I can put under water and we'll let her soak in there, see if we can get any any movement from those star sea stars under there. Got some crocs so I can get into the water a bit. Oh they're slippery those crocs. Okay. So I'll just show you where I have it planted there. Here we are just under the water, seeing if those purple sea stars are moving around over time. Okay, let's go through some of my pros and cons after using it a bit. I like that it's waterproof, 10 meters, 33 feet with just the case. If you put it inside a plastic waterproof case, you can go down to 60 meters or 196 feet. Uh, I like the front screen option on it. Uh, I like the lens protector. Uh, two batteries included. They're uh, 1,550 milliamp hours each, so quite an increase over my other ones there. Uh, I like the castle includes all the different mounts. A lot of the, the cameras you have to buy those as extra accessories. Uh, has good slow mo and time lapse right into the camera, makes it very easy. I uh, like the touch screen, seems to work pretty well. They've improved that. Uh, everything's easy to use as far as setting up the camera and going through the touch screen options. Uh, has the Wi Fi app on the phone and also the firmware is easy to upgrade through the Wi Fi app. It uh, has voice commands, so you can tell it to take a photo or record with your voice, or you can use the little remote, and the remote seems to work pretty well. It uh, has better sound recording than my previous model, that's for sure not as distorted as it was before. Price goes for about $250, which is fairly expensive. It's kind of a mid-line uh, price for these action cameras, but compared to a GoPro uh, like the 10, it's well over $400 for that and you don't get near as many accessories. Uh, let's go some of the cons. Uh, I found the mounting case that they give you is kind of flimsy feeling. It almost feels like it could be easy to, to break. Uh, and, you know the waterproof case that I had for the other one was a lot more sturdy. Uh, the super smooth works but you need the phone app to download to and process so that's kind of a a pain to do each time you want to do the super smooth. Uh, I find the auto exposure for the bright levels is sometimes too bright in a lot of the highlights they get blown out which is kind of a, a problem with uh, cameras with such tiny lenses but thought I'd mention that. And uh, the picture's not as good as what you would expect given the specs, the resolutions, you know they brag about 4K and all this sort of thing but when it comes down to it, it's never really as good as what 4K looks like on a TV. You know, you see a, a TV show with 4K, it's startling resolution, whereas these little cameras, they're, they basically look kind of like HD to me, even though the, the spec may say 4K. And that, again, has something to do with the, the very small 
uh, size of the sensor on it. But I always see when they have their advertisements, everything looks so crisp and good in their advertisement. When But when you actually use it in real life, like you see in my video, it's not quite as good as, they, as they're letting on, but pretty decent for a small camera. So overall, I'm, I'm happy with the, th the upgrade to my other camera. And, and you'll probably see some footage and stuff in videos going forward. Till next time, Ray from Lovey RV. Thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers, folks.